The city of Chatfield, established in 1853, has a long association with bands and band music performance. The first band was organized in 1883, and in 1885 the Chatfield Town Council set up a tax appropriation to fund summer band concerts. In 1969, Jim Perkins, with his trademark waxed mustache, took that tradition gleaned the names of former high school area band members and asked them to join a brass band to perform at area events. The first rehearsal was held on October 1, 1969. In a year's time, they had already added woodwinds and made 21 appearances. As the band's size and reputation grew, they scheduled over 30 concerts a year, including appearances at the State Fair and an annual Veterans Day concert. In 1973, the Chatfield High School Band and the Brass Band performed summer concerts in the Chatfield City Park. In September of 1973, the band invited women to join them for the first time. The bylaws of the organization were changed to reflect this in 1973, fundraising began for a bandwagon. John Williman, who played clarinet in the band and worked for IBM, designed the expanding wagon. The Southeastern Vocational Center provided free labor with building trade students from Chatfield, Preston, and Harmony. John's design used a mobile home chassis as the base. On the road, the wagon is eight feet wide but for parades it expands to 12 feet wide. It is 26 feet long with three level platforms. The bandwagon was dedicated in 1976 by Merle Evans of Ringling Brothers Circus fame. The original bandwagon is still in use today, reminding people that Chatfield is Bantown, USA. When the band started with no music to play from, Jim knew just what to do. He knew a lot of musicians and composers, and he put the word out that the new Chatfield band needed music. And it started coming in from band directors all over and snowballed into huge amounts of music. The initial repository for all this music was in the Perkins home. So the family donated a piece of land they owned to create a building where the burgeoning collection of music could be stored permanently. The Chatfield Music Lending Library was built and dedicated in 1981 with Dr. William Ravelli doing the honors. The Music Lending Library is the only one of its kind in the world today. The library has collected and cataloged more than 47,600 pieces. The largest portion is for band music. The library is a nonprofit organization funded solely by memberships, fees, and donations. In 1982, the band traveled to Washington, D.C. There they performed with the Baltimore Symphony and with the U.S. Marine Band at the gravesite of John Philip Sousa. In Baltimore, on the same trip, we stood between the stage containing the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra and the first row of seats in the theater. The building was packed and the spotlights were on us when we alternated playing Stars and Stripes Forever with the orchestra. On the return trip home, one band bus was involved in an accident in which 48 people were injured. Jim Perkins passed away in 1990 at the age of 54. Members of the band met and formed a board of directors with Ray Thompson as president. Mindert and Wilhelmina Zilstra volunteered to manage the music lending library. Lou Rabick continued as band director. The Chatfield Brass Band has had five band directors in its history. Vern Anderson led the band from its origination in 1969 through 1973. In 1973, Dan Reesness led the band until 1975. In 1975, H.L. Lindstrom, Hal Lindstrom, took the podium and led the band until 1984. 
From 1984 through 1997, Lou Rabeck was the band's director. In 1997, Carmen Arvison stepped to the podium and took the baton. Carmen continues as the band's director today and has been the longest operating band director in the Chatfield Brass Band's history. The Chatfield Brass Band has had the pleasure of playing at many venues over the years. At St. Mary's Auditorium in Rochester, Minnesota in 1971, when the band was still all men. The ASBDA convention in the Twin Cities with a standing ovation from all the truly great band directors of the country, 10,000 people shouting for more. And afterwards at an evening concert at Lake Harriet Bandshell in front of thousands of people with Garrison Keeler acting as MC. The Chatfield Brass Band, H.L. Lidstrom, the director. In 1982, in Washington, D.C., with the Marine Band at John Philip Sousa's gravesite, playing 76 trombones directed by Meredith Wilson in 1982. But he doesn't know the territory! Riding 12 feet high on a circus wagon drawn by four horses and trying to play marches during Chatfield's Western Days Parade at Circus World Museum at Baraboo, Wisconsin. As part of Pilot Mound's Lutheran Ice Cream Social for over 40 years. For Rochester Fest concerts and parades, as well as in a snowstorm during Rochester's Loyalty Day Parade. In 1995, plans were started to build a new band shell in the city park. After many revisions, a design was chosen and fundraising began. Over 300 individuals and community groups made financial donations to reach the $80,000 goal. In 1997, the old band shell was taken down. The new building was completed and dedicated in June of 2000 at the band's 30th anniversary concert and celebration. The band shell serves as a performance space for the Chatfield Music in the Park concert series, which officially began in 1998. Concerts are on Thursday evenings throughout the summer, with the Chatfield Brass Band and guest groups performing. This series has continued Chatfield's tradition of summer concerts in the park, made possible with grants from the Southeastern Minnesota Arts Council. on the library property served as storage for the bandwagon for many years. The board of directors deemed it unstable and worked to clean it out and tear it down in 2002. Funds were raised to build a new garage behind the library. Dan Hollerman and Larry Tucker planned and supervised the construction of the building. 
Most of the work was done by band members over the entire summer of 2003. The garage serves as storage for the pickup and bandwagon in addition to storage for the Wits End Theater set materials. For the past 50 years, the band has not only been a musical organization, but a close-knit community of great people who enjoy getting together to play their instruments and socialize. Friendships, relationships, and support have been the mainstay of this group. In 1977, band member Rita Kramer described it best. I finally managed to get to a Chatfield Brass Band rehearsal last week after a too long absence and came away with a new appreciation for the privilege of being a part of that noteworthy group. And I suspect that's at least part of what keeps players coming from all over southeastern Minnesota. It's quite literally an opportunity to sit down and blow your troubles away. Frustrations fall away. Tensions melt. Problems are seen in better perspective after an evening of Carl King marches, Broadway show tunes, rambling overtures, and pop tunes of bygone years. Would that everyone could have such a delightful diversion. Who would have guessed that the small group of 14 musicians would have blossomed into a thriving community band for over 50 years? The Chatfield Brass Band continues to welcome all and to grow to meet the community's needs. It has helped build creative, musical, and leadership skills while providing this area with marvelous music served with a smile. share in his laughter. That man is Jim Perkins. There is a plaque honoring him on the wall. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.